Hello leaders and future leaders, this is Sergeant First Class Bites. Watching this video means you're probably one mentally tough and, you know, slightly crazy individual. Are you really considering jumping out of a perfectly good airplane? Nice. Then you are my type of person. In this video, I'm going to explain what Airborne School is, how to get an airborne slot, and break down each week of training. If you would, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have some exciting content coming that you won't want to miss that you won't find anywhere else. I do my best to respond to all my comments, so if you have any military related questions, send them. I take helping my viewers very serious. Also, last note, another great military channel that I strongly encourage you to visit is Team Swartz. Real recognize real. At Team Swartz, you're going to get the yeah. latest and greatest military information. His videos are spot on, visually pleasing, and he has access to information that a lot of other military channels don't have access to. All right, let's get straight into this crazy idea you're considering or want information about. The very first thing I want to do is build your confidence a little bit. I have been to a lot of army schools. I have many takeaways from attending these schools, but something that stays consistent across the board, safety is always the top priority. And normally these schools are designed for you to pass. The absolute last thing they want at airborne school is for someone to get injured or killed during a jump. Think about this. Most people who go skydiving complete a couple hour class and then skydive that exact same day. At airborne school, you're going to train for two weeks before your first jump. You will have prepared and rehearsed for this jump so many times that once you get on that C-130 or C-17 aircraft, the process will be like muscle memory. Additionally, your instructors are some of the most veteran paratroopers in the world, literally, so they will be with you every step of the way. What is Airborne School? Well, its official title is Basic Airborne Course, or BOC. Airborne School is a three-week course that trains you to become a paratrooper. Most soldiers volunteer to become a paratrooper, but not all. Some of them attend because their military occupational specialty or special skills require it. The course is designed to be physically and mentally challenging, and it requires a lot of patience. Ultimately, the goal is to complete five jumps on your third week, graduate, earn the additional skill identifier, and obtain your jump wings. How do you get an airborne slot? The absolute best way to get an airborne slot through the Army is under the Option 4 contract when enlisting. Option 4 guarantees airborne school in your contract. Do note that it's more likely to get Option 4 in your contract if you are enlisting into a combat MOS. If it were me and I was dead set on airborne school, I would go visit an army recruiter and tell them you will enlist if they can get you option four in your contract. Now, they will likely tell you that it's hard to get the option four contract and you should just enlist and try to get into airborne school once you are in the army. Do not accept that. Tell them you are only interested in enlisting when the option four is available. I'd literally say, okay, if option four ever does come available, here's my number, call me and I'll be ready to swear in. Then I'd leave the recruiting office or tell them all right look i'll take the asvab to show you that i'm serious then do it take the asvab and then tell them to call you when the option four comes available Airborne slots can come available at OSET or BCT for the best performers. When I was at infantry school, there were some soldiers that were offered airborne slots. And I have heard that this happens regularly at OSET still to this day. Since airborne school and infantry school are on the same base, if a soldier scheduled for airborne falls out for some reason and they need a quick replacement to fill up the training seat, potentially the first place they could look for that replacement is at infantry school. So if you do not get airborne in your contract but you really want to go, you better be Johnny on the spot at basic training because the airborne instructors will be asking the drill sergeants who the most high speed soldiers are and that's who they will end up filling the slots with. Option for airborne slots after basic combat training. Ask your leadership. An airborne slot will never just fall into your lap. Ask and ask again. If you are one of my soldiers and you've never told me that your dream is to become a paratrooper, I will never know. I won't be in leaders meetings fighting to get you a slot because I did not know that you desired this. Now, if you're showing up late to formations, missing movements, not meeting height and weight, or physical standards, don't ask. I can only fight to get you a slot if you're doing your due diligence. Another good option to get an airborne slot would be in your re-enlistment contract. Let it be known that you will only re-enlist if you can be guaranteed an airborne slot and stand firm behind that. Talks of you re-enlisting will start 365 days prior to your ETS date, so that's when you need to start speaking up. Airborne training. 
So as previously mentioned, airborne school is three weeks. Week one is ground week, week two tower week, and week three is jump week. All right, let's take a look at each week and discuss what you should expect to do. Week one, ground week. During ground week, you start an intensive program of instruction to build individual airborne skills, which will prepare you to make a parachute jump and land safely. You will train on the mock door, the 34-foot tower, and the lateral drift apparatus. To go forward to tower training week, you must individually qualify on the 34-foot tower, the lateral drift apparatus, and pass all PT requirements. Week 2, Tower Week. The individual skills learned during ground week are refined during tower week and team effort or mass exit concept is added to training. The apparatus I use this week are the 34 foot tower, the swing landing trainer, the mock door for mass exit training, the suspended harness, and the 250 foot free tower. Tower week completes your individual skill training and builds team effort skills. To go forward to jump training week, you must qualify on the swing landing trainer, master the mass exit procedures from the 34 foot tower and pass all PT requirements. Week 3, Jump Week. During Jump Week, students must successfully complete 5 parachute jumps at 1,250 feet from a C-130 or C-17 aircraft. Trainees must run to the airfield each day, conduct sustained airborne training, and then don their equipment and await their turn to jump. Prior to jumping with their combat equipment, each student will conduct a rigging exercise with their instructor to show them proper rigging of the airborne combat equipment. Generally, two of the jumps are combat equipment jumps, in which the jumper carries a Molly Ruck with a modular airborne weapons case and a dummy weapon. Jump 3, or the Hollywood jump, the jumper only wears the parachute in reserve. The last jump will culminate combining the combat equipment with a night jump giving the student a complete understanding of a night combat equipment jump. Paratroopers who successfully meet course requirements are granted an additional skill identifier and are authorized to wear the coveted silver wing on their uniform. The latest information I got in regard to airborne school and COVID. Students will complete a 14-day quarantine at their duty station before traveling to airborne school. All right, if you have any questions about airborne school or military questions in general, leave them below. Also, if this video helped you in any way, please like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Good luck in becoming a paratrooper. This is Sergeant First Class Bites. I'm out.